Whoa. Just finishing off a burn from last night. <clears throat> and I want to show you something real quick. Check out this sweet batch of biochar. Now, you've probably seen biochar kilns of the top load updraft type where they use a 55 gallon barrel. You fill it up, you burn it from the top all the way down. It's got some holes in the bottom. It draws the air through and it's got a chimney. And that's great. And that's a really good way of doing it with very little smoke. And uh, you can do it in an area, you know, like a backyard without really being obnoxious. Um, this here is completely different. This is a, a cone kiln. It's actually a, it's easier to make them as a, you know, basically an upside down pyramid. And um, this works on a different principle. What I like about this one <coughs> is that I pack in the material, burn it, I keep topping it on top, and I can keep burning until I get it completely full of char. As you can see, this is all biochar in here. All biochar. The difference between this and the top load updraft variety is that those you can't refill. Once they start, they're, they're started, and you start with a 55 gallon drum and you end up with mm, like 20% of a 55 gallon drum full of biochar. This, the amount, of, the, the amount that's in here is probably like, I don't know, four or five or six burns from one of those barrels and I did it all at one time. The drawback is that this method makes a lot more smoke so it's a little bit more obnoxious if you live in a neighborhood but if you live out on land, if you have you know, open space like I do. You can get away with this kind of stuff and it's a way more productive method of producing biochar. In my opinion, you can also do this style of, you can actually dig a pit in the ground that's this shape. You can also do long trenches that are, you know, basically this shape but elongated. The idea is that once the material burns, it settles and it compresses. And as you keep putting stuff on top, you don't actually fully burn the things that are on the bottom. So you don't turn it completely to ash, you actually char it and preserve it by putting things on top. And the way that the air circulates over the, over the sides and over the top is that you're burning the gases off the top instead of burning the material in the bottom. So there's a lot more information about that on the internet, you can look it up. But um, this is a cone kiln. I had this custom made uh, my fabricator buddy made this for me. If you're interested in something like this, it's not hard to have made. Uh, if you are interested in buying one from someone like me, if you're local or just have a specific interest, let me know and I can see about having some of these made. Um, this is a last forever kind of thing and the nice thing about it is that this doubles as a fire pit. So I have <coughs> I have this grate here that when I'm doing a smaller burn, you know, I can set the grate over the side of it or over the whole thing if I want and use it as a cook surface. And if I don't need it, I just set it aside. But it's pretty cool. So this is a way of making a lot of biochar or relatively like on a, you know, on a homestead scale, if you need it quite a bit, you can make it a lot faster than with those barrels. Um, and the infrastructure lasts a lot longer. The, the barrels that I've used before, they, they, they last for about, you know, eight to 10 burns, and then you're pretty much, you gotta throw that barrel away. This is like, I don't know how thick that steel, it's like quarter inch or something, or whatever it is. This is gonna last forever. <laughs> so, anyway, that's my two cents on the biochar production, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.